Robert Estrin, and this is livingpianos.com and virtualsheetmusic.com with a question today. What are parallel intervals? Parallel intervals, simply put, are any intervals that go consecutively in the same direction. So for example, if you have a, the interval of fifth, like C to G, going to D and A, and it could continue up that way. So this is what parallel fifths sound like. Parallel thirds would sound like this. So those are parallel intervals. What's the significance of parallel intervals anyway? Well, if you go back far enough, the very first written music was plain song or Gregorian chant. It was liturgical text just sung. Well, eventually things evolved. It took a long time, but they decided to have a second note and that's where organum began. And organum was mostly parallel fourths. So it sounded something like this, and I'll, I'll try to emulate the plain song sound a little bit, but not really anything authentic for all you scholars out there, just to get a feel beyond just playing notes. So that's parallel fourths, more or less. And then eventually the strangest thing happened. As music developed into uh, counterpoint and real polyphony, not just two notes at a time, the writings of Bach chorales and the basic rules of four-part harmony completely forbid the use of parallel fifths and parallel octaves. And you might wonder, what, why, why are these forbidden? Well, there's a very good reason for it. The very first writing was vocal writing. Typically in four-part chorale writing, you have a soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And the idea was to have distinct separate lines that you could hear, yet wherever the voices would sing together would create harmonies. So you had the linear element of the voices separately and together where the voices created harmonies. And this was very interesting. Now, the reason why parallel octaves were avoided is kind of obvious. If you have two voices singing the same notes an octave apart, it sounds like the same line, doesn't it? You don't hear it distinctly as two lines. So if you're writing four-part writing, and you want to hear the separate voices, obviously you don't want to have parallel octaves. Well, what about fifths? Here's the thing about fifths that is very important to realize. The fifth is the first overtone uh, after the octave. And as such, you don't really hear it as much as a separate note. So parallel fifths sound like this, as I demonstrated earlier. You don't really hear the separate lines like you would, for example, with parallel thirds, which is a sweet sound, and you hear the distinctness of each note because they're not as closely related in the overtone series. They really are more separate uh, in terms of the physics of the sound. That's a very sweet sound. So parallel thirds are fair game. Parallel fourths, if you have a chord in its first inversion, there's your C major chord. In the first inversion, with the E on the bottom and the C on top, the top two notes are a fourth. So when you have parallel chords moving in the first inversion, you're going to have parallel thirds and parallel fourths. Which is perfectly okay. So if you're writing strict four-part writing, you want to avoid parallel fifths and octaves or any time you want the voices to be distinct from one another. That's the long and short of parallel intervals, more than you probably hoped for. I hope it's been interesting for you. Again, Robert Estrin at virtualsheetmusic.com and livingpianos.com.